Maxwell. I've discovered a clue. The path seems to be leading in that direction. I'll even run. He told me the battery's weak, which usually means the battery's dead. Yes, sir. Dead as a doornail. All right, folks, this is a 2006, I think, Dodge Ram 25, 3500. At least it's some of the thicker parts of a Dodge Ram 3500. This one's been uh, weight reduced quite a bit. It's the Super Legera model. This is a solid Northern Illinois move. We typically install these aluminum flatbeds after the original box rots out so bad that the only thing holding it on is the tail light wiring. Speaking of which, I don't know if it even really has any tail light wiring. She's a little rough, folks. Will the hood stay open? Negative. So the hood struts are shot. Batteries are shot. It's got the Cummins, six, seven. How much has been deleted? Oh, looks like most of it. Anyway, it's got an oil leak, a massive oil leak. Let's, uh, oh, oh. That's a good looking air box there. Yeah, let's get the battery charger on it, get it inside, see what we can figure out. All right, let's flip this from stun to kill. Let's see if she'll start. Beautiful. Look at that, no check engine light. Oh. <laughs> May have spoken too soon. Well, that's more like it. Check gauges, ABS, parking brake, seat belt, throttle body. How many miles has this pile got on it? 204, just getting broke in. Yeah, here's a pro tip. It might be tempting to go ahead and roll down the window to fold in that mirror. Don't you dare roll down the window in a pile of junk like this. You will regret it. Uh-huh. Okay. I may be trapped. So the uh, the shift cable apparently just decided to pack up on us. And that's all the further I can get the door open. So, yeah. Guess we better think skinny thoughts. Try to weasel our way out of here. All right, folks, if you're the sort of viewer who doesn't appreciate when I poke a little fun at a customer's vehicle, just go ahead and close the video now because something tells me I won't be able to stop myself. So the first and most obvious problem is the oil leak. It's coming right out of the oil pan. It's just rotted out. I can shove my thumb right through that. And it's like that pretty much all over. Pretty common problem in our area, the salt just gets them. I think I have a video where we did one of these on a international dump truck. Same deal, just rusted through. But it's not, not nearly as easy of a job in one of these pickups. So to get that thing out of there, see how close it is to the cross member, we're gonna have to undo the mounts and the radiator, fan shroud and all that stuff and pick the engine up about as high as we can and then try to get the oil pan past the cross member and down past the bell housing. So, yeah. Then it's also got a bad U-joint out here on the, for the four wheel drive. Hopefully you guys can see that. Quite a bit of play. The transmission shift cable is totally shot. Somebody's done a little bit of a, a hose clamp tune-up here, but it doesn't work at all. It won't go into park. 
it's actually stuck in like first gear right now of course everything down here has been deleted too so no more DPF frame is actually surprisingly solid you got to work at it pretty hard to get one of these one ton frames to rust out but it does happen and then back here we got some kind of a leak I'm not 100% sure what it is I think it's a fuel line looks like it's coming out of that elbow right there that corner bend whatever you call it and you see it's already been patched once before somebody gave it the same the same hose clamp tune-up so yeah that's the stuff that it needs just to be able to back out the door under its own power <laughs> sure there's plenty of other problems but that's the the pressing stuff I gave him a pretty good size estimate and the only question was when can you start so we've got a Chinese dormant oil pan a Mexican Moog U-joint, a Mexican Mopar shift cable, and a Felpro oil pan gasket set made right here in America. Yeah, we're going to fix it, put it back on the road where it belongs. So I've been wanting a cordless ratchet for quite some time now. I couldn't figure out which one to get and blah blah blah. I ended up just buying the cheapest one I could find which was this Hercules from Harbor Freight. We'll see how it works. I yeah I like my pneumatic one but it's so freaking loud. It's a Matco. I've had it forever. It's a fantastic tool but it is hard on the ears. just pop out. There it is. Well actually I think this this fan shroud can stay. The book says to pull the inner fan shroud. I'm not sure that's actually necessary. I think the blades would clear it. I guess it's only two bolts. Let's go ahead and pop it out of there and see. Just a CYA I guess. If you're wondering if the Harbor Freight batteries come pre-charged, the answer is no. Well, that's the concept. I wish this support bar was just a smidge longer or the battery box ear was in a little bit different spot. But I don't think it can possibly fall off there. We should be fine. I added a lifting eye here on the intake side and it's got the factory ear over here on the exhaust side. The ear coming off the frame is actually notched in the top. You can't see it because the bolt's blocking it. But it should lift right up out of there without having to touch that bolt. Well, that's cool. Wish they were all like that. Yeah, I think that's about all we're going to get. It's a little sketchy, if I'm being honest. The, uh, the support legs here on the bar were starting to lean just a little bit, so I actually threw on a safety chain here just to make sure it doesn't doesn't rack over and I ended up putting a block of wood and a floor jack on the front of the 
the damper and picking it up that way. I'm just using the support bar to hold it. All right, I have drained the oil and removed all of the oil pan bolts. It actually went pretty well. Only had to fight with one of them. I'm assuming we're gonna to have to pull the pickup tube off in order to actually get this thing out of here. But it is loose. But it's gonna be a tight fit. Here's the oil pickup tube right here. And there's, I think, four bolts in it. I got one out. The one at the back is the easy one to get out. This ratchet's paying for itself already. Of course, if I was smarter, I would have figured out you can just slide the oil pan to the side and pretty easily access that bolt. Wrong size socket, fella. bottom of the block cleaned up looks pretty decent so I've got to put a little bit of silicone in four spots between the block and the front and rear cover and then we're ready to install the pan oil pan looks good it is a match this is a new pickup tube gasket we'll probably glue that one on to the pickup tube just so we don't have any problems but the oil pan gasket has this bead of I don't know what it is. Silicone or something already molded into it. So we'll probably be better off to put that one in dry. Now the last time I did one of these I mentioned DeBoss Garage has a video about a, I think it was a 5.9 Cummins that was destroyed by an aftermarket oil pan, probably a Dorman, where the paint on the inside came off and plugged up the pickup tube and starved the engine for oil. And a lot of people said I should sandblast the oil pan and all this craziness. The factory oil pans are also painted on the inside. I mean, it, it just seemed like it was a defect. I haven't heard about any of that. I haven't heard about that problem happening to anybody but that one guy on that video. So we're gonna put it on like it is, it'll be just fine. Got the oil pickup tube installed. That is not a whole lot of fun. It gets torqued to 18 foot pounds. And then there's two bolts that go through the whatever you want to call it, the spacer plate or the, the girdle plate on the bottom of the block. Those get torqued to 32 foot pounds. Well, just a quick word of caution. The gasket for the oil pickup tube is not symmetrical and you can get it in there backwards. So I actually just had to pull this one apart and flip the gasket around. I don't think it can leak externally with the gasket installed backwards, but it certainly isn't ideal. The Dorman oil pan is actually kind of an upgrade. It's got this stiffener on the flange that the original pan doesn't have. I guess technically we probably should have put some longer bolts in that, but it'll be fine. 
Torque spec is 21 foot-pounds. Start in the middle, work your way towards the outside. Important note, the oil pan gasket is also directional. The bolt hole pattern is symmetrical, but the shape of the gasket is not. You cannot install it back to front. It won't work. There's a, a notch out of the back of the oil pan where the uh, inspection cover is for the transmission or for the torque converter. So you have to put it in the right way. All right guys, so we're done with the oil pan portion of the job. I filled it up with new oil, new oil filter, the air box, everything's installed, all the shrouds and everything. It's not a bad job. In fact, I'm not sure where they get the, the book time from. I just double checked, 7.3 hours is what they call for. Even with this thing being a complete rust bucket, me having never done one before, and messing around with lights and cameras and other YouTube nonsense, we don't even have half that into this job so I'm wondering if maybe there's some kind of discrepancy because there's a huge difference in the the procedure from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive so I wonder if the book time is for the two-wheel drive because it seems like the two-wheel drive is way worse it's got a rack and pinion and there must be some kind of a suspension cradle or something in the front that's in the way because they specify move, removing the transmission and all kinds of craziness that we didn't have to do so Anyway, let's move on to the next item, whatever that may be. And the cool thing is it's got this inspection hole in the bed. All right, folks, we got a real mess here with the fuel lines. The more I look at it, the more I, I'm not even sure what's going on. So if you look behind that red band on the elbow there, that 5 16s fuel line's already been spliced once. It's got a push connect fitting in the plastic line that comes out of the tank. And then it's leaking, that's a steel line there, it's leaking right at the elbow. And then I think it's leaking right above that brake line. But then if you follow it down here, that 3 8 fuel line's also leaking right here at the cross member. And the 5 16 fuel line's been patched once before with a piece of hose. So it's basically a mess all the way up to. Well, it gets better up here beside the transmission. I guess maybe the transmission slung enough oil over onto those lines that it protected them. Somehow, shockingly, the brake line does not seem to be leaking. So that's a first, that it could have two rusted out fuel lines and not have a rusted out brake line. Anyway, I'm not sure how we're going to fix this yet. Well, I'm thinking the deciding factor in how we fix these fuel lines is whether or not these quick connects come apart. There shouldn't be any fuel in these lines. I've already cut them further down the frame rail, but saying that out loud is a good way to ensure that there definitely is fuel in these lines. And there's no way for me to do this without it just pouring down on my head. Hey, look at that. <laughs> so far, so good. Look at that. All right, folks, here's the plan, if you want to call it that. We could make new hard lines, just like the hard lines we removed using this NICOP brake line material. I've got 3 8 and 5 16 here in bulk. The problem with that is just the cost. This stuff's crazy expensive. I think the 3 8 stuff's over $4 a foot, and we're going to need probably 25 feet of it. So 
$100 worth of line, plus we need a union and a couple nuts, so add another 20 bucks. So we'd be into it for 120 bucks, plus we gotta bend it and all that craziness. What I think we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of this plastic fuel line. And I'll use the NICOP to make up some, some short jumpers. I already made one up for the 5 16 so we'll do one for the 3 8 These connectors are, are kind of pricey, but we should be all in cheaper using the plastic than the NICOP. I'll show you guys how this works. It's pretty cool. This is a flaring tool made by Master Cool. It's actually a hydraulic cylinder that pushes on the dies to flare brake lines, but it can also flare these quick connect fittings. So I've got a die here for the 3 8 line. Just like a brake line, line it up with the end there. And then you have the forming part of the die. I like to put a little bit of grease in there because, well, you'll see. It does have a tendency to get stuck on the outside of the tube. The 5 eighths is worse than the 3 eighths. Or the, sorry, the 5 sixteenths is worse than the 3 eighths. Anyway, we're gonna thread this guy in here like so. Tighten up the valve. Bottom out the die. Now it's currently stuck, so we're going to just unthread it. And it'll eventually pull itself pull itself loose. I haven't found a better way to do that. If there is one, let me know. And you end up with a perfectly formed Quick connect. It's pretty cool. They can also do uh, transmission cooler lines and some of the weirder GM fuel line connections. It does inverted flare, regular flare. These are fantastic tools. They're very expensive and if you don't do a lot of work with them it may not be worth having it but for me it's it's a lifesaver. All right now for the plastic fuel line. So you want to make sure you got the end cut nice and square. And then we're going to put it in this little holding fixture here. So this gizmo here works like one of those quick action woodworking clamps. And we're going to take the little retainer out. We'll slip this guy over the little mandrel. Slide this thing on like so. Now we'll get it started. Right, before I go to town I like to give it a little shot of brake clean. This helps lubricate it and then I like to lean on it a little bit. That's it. That's a little tedious the way that this holding fixture works, but I don't know if I know of a better way to do it. So that's it. We don't need any kind of clamp over that. It's rated for plenty of pressure. No problem. If you use one of these metal barbs, like to splice two pieces of this plastic line together, you do have to use a clamp over that. So I clipped the existing hard lines right at the transfer case and then I just flared on a new quick connect end. You do have to remove the plastic or whatever it is vinyl coating that's on there otherwise you will not get a good a good crimp.
Somehow I came up a little bit short on my 5 16 line. Uh, it'll work fine. I put some protection around that shock mount. And then I chose to run behind the cross member instead of around it, which is a lot easier with this flexible line. Looks good. And I just smeared some grease on the bare ends of those steel lines. Hopefully that keeps it from rusting for a little while. And I'm sure I'll get a, a pile of comments from people about how all I really need for this repair is a spool of rubber hose and some clamps. But you guys got to understand that I just I can't do that. There's too much liability, at least for on-road vehicles like this. If it was a tractor or something like that, you know, it's a different story. But there's just too much risk. And yes, I realize that it doesn't stop other people from doing it. You know, just like plugging tires or using compression fittings on brake lines. I always get comments from people, you know, I've done that for 40 years and never had a problem. You know, that's fine, but all it takes is one incident to, to end things for you. It's amazing how much torque you lose with the extension on these these flip sockets. <laughs> it's like the ABS must be working pretty good. Well, this pin's still somewhat pin-shaped. I don't know if we can get it out of there or not. Look at that. To the comment section. We need to take that out of there or not? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, look at that.
Nothing to it, huh? Oh. <laughs> Junkyard axle? I think so. It's probably not a good sign when your half shaft will stand at attention. The U-joint's completely foobar. I had a Super Duty Ford one time come in and you'd go around a corner and the wheels wouldn't straighten back out. It's because the U-joint in the half shaft was completely seized up. <laughs> there it is. That one shot too. Of course. Clean her up and put her back in? Probably not. I like to put a little grease in the bores just to help things go together. So the big thing is we want to get the, the grease circ towards the inside. Now the trick is to try to keep this thing centered so that the needles can't fall out of either cap. It's a little tricky. I don't want to say that was easy, but it wasn't too bad. It can be a real struggle. I've had to heat up the ears and torch off the crosses and punch things out and put them in presses and yeah, let's be glad it went as well as it did.
You get a lot of questions about this tool. This is a needle scaler. It's essentially an air hammer, but instead of having a single bit, it has many small bits in the form of these needles. And it really does a number on the rust and scale and nasty stuff that we have. This one's made by Chicago Pneumatic. It is made in the USA. That is not the same as Central Pneumatic, which is a Harbor Freight name brand. I'm sure there's no coincidence that those names are so similar. Anyway, if you live where there's rust and you work on vehicles, this is a must-have tool. Gotta crack open a brand new can of finger paint. Can't have too much. Perfect. Brake pads look like new. Actually, these rotors are in good shape too. Do have a torn boot on the caliper pin, but other than that, they're functional, so they're going back together. That's why I shouldn't work past 8 o'clock. Well, I guess we better reinstall a cotter pin here. Just in case that nut decides to... decides to back itself off suddenly. That would be a bad deal. All right, folks, I have identified the problem with the shift cable. That is supposed to be over there. So she ain't gonna work like that. I think that just pops off there. We got it out and it bears the mark of the beast the wallet with wings so somebody's been here before and they installed a Dorman aftermarket shift cable yeah I'm willing to stick my neck out on a what seven hour job installing a Dorman aftermarket oil pan but I will not be installing a Dorman aftermarket shift cable not if I can help it I think we're in. If I understand the adjustment correctly, all you have to do is put the transmission in park, put the shift lever in park, and then this little spring here should compress, and then you clip in this white lock and this white lock, and then pull the little hand grenade pin, and everything should be good to go. 
I think we'll leave the covers off for now until we get the batteries installed and we can run it a little bit and make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. All right guys, we are done with this project. Got our new fuel lines, new transmission shift cable, new engine oil pan, and a new front axle U-joint. Well, this truck's got two Group 65 batteries. The cables are a disaster, just like every plow truck. It's got a CarQuest battery on this side. I think it's from 18. But the other side is a value power. So this is a 650 cold cranking amp. The other one's an 850 and this one's from 2016. So I'm pretty sure this value power is smoked. It's not even at 12 volts. So let's see what it does. It does nothing. It has zero amps. junk too. So that's it, it's getting two new batteries. Well that should do it under the hood. Two new batteries. I've got all the shrouds and guards and stuff put back. New oil, new oil filter. I put the air filter box back together sort of the right way. It's missing one of the clips back here but that shouldn't hurt anything. Let's see if it'll start. Well, there's the check engine light. I was curious why it wasn't on. Let's get this thing out of here. Well, turns out the check engine light was my fault. All right, folks, that's it. We're done. Thanks for watching. What are we up to, family? Numbers. I can do my twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I think I got a little problem there around 12. What? No. Here's a one and a two. If only there was a math teacher who could monitor him. Sometimes you just got to let him preform it. All right. I just need some help. That's it. Good times. What a mess.